we're in the finals right now in the NBA. And we, we can get we can get back to Major League Baseball a little bit later on in the show because we got some sad news um, that we're going to get to a little bit later. But we want to start out with the excitement. Uh, my main man, King James, is two wins away from getting his fourth NBA championship ring, which I'm ecstatic about. Uh, complete dominance in the first two games. And I know, you know, the, the Heat are missing Bam out of Bayou and Goran Dragic, but let's be clear. Game one before before they went down, my um, you know Miami was also all, already getting the breaks beat off of them by the Lakers. They couldn't do anything with Anthony Davis. LeBron James was doing whatever he wanted. Playoff Rondo was balling, and and you know I, I I'm I'm changing Danny Green's name to Finals Danny because it seems like the only time he actually plays the ball is in the finals, and you know he's 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 shooting the way he was shooting, you know. In San Antonio <laughs> during, during the NBA Finals, him and uh, Caldwell Pope have both been knocking down the three consistently uh, for the Lakers in both games. Kyle Kuzma came off the bench and gave them some some points. They have complete control of this series. I know last week, you know, what I'm saying I, I I was telling you I said I wanted to say five, but if it goes six, I'm not, I'm not going to be upset. But the way things are going. Now, with Dragic is going to be out for the rest of the series. I know Bam will be back um, for game game three, but I, I think the Lakers sweep the series. Yeah, I mean, I, I, even with Bam coming back in game three, um, is he going to be 100% healthy or is we're getting an 80% Bam? Because they need 100% of Bam to have any type of shot to slow down Anthony Davis. 80% um, of Bam just isn't going to get the job done. Um, I wasn't... I, I, I don't I never put too much stock in game one. We've talked about this before because game two is where all the adjustments are made. So I, I'm not surprised that the Lakers blew them out. Um, but at the same time, I think that, you know, this series is over because they've already taken Miami's heart. I, I don't think Miami has any will to fight. It showed yesterday. They came out in the first quarter. They were very flat. Uh, they didn't get it going until midway through the third quarter. And even though the game scoreboard wise looked like it was close. Uh, Lakers could have easily been up 25 points at any point in this game. It almost seemed like they were toying with the, with the Miami Heat. The series is over. Um, it's it's unfortunate because as fans, we don't get to see the Miami Heat at full strength and see if they could compete. As you mentioned, game one, Dragic goes down, Bam goes down. They're not quite the same team because that's two of your five starters and it also eliminates your depth. And also we, we knew already that the best two players in this series both play on the Lakers side of things. So you needed to be at full strength to even compete. Right now, Miami is struggling just to compete. I don't see how they could even win a game. I think this series is over at the most five games, but I really think the next two games are it. I think we're done with basketball. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I got, I got to agree with you a thousand percent on that. Um, as good as the Miami Heat have been, and again, you know, I, I definitely want to give flowers to that to that organization because they played very well um, up until until this point, and even still. Jimmy Butler truly has displayed the heart of a champion. Uh, you know, our, our guy, the young and swaggy T, you know, he hasn't been slowed down. He's still doing what he's been doing throughout the playoffs. So I want to commend him for keeping it up because a lot of times we'll see that. And then we go into, you know, going to the finals where the, the pressure is the is the at the biggest uh, point is going to be. And, and, and a guy like that might cool off. He has not. He's been playing very well. He's still no matter who's in front of him, he's not afraid to take the shot. He's not afraid to get to the basket. So we got to commend uh, Tyler Harrell for the way he's been playing ball. Um, I'm, a, I'm a bit disappointed in Duncan Robinson. Uh, he didn't score his first points until game two. He hit a, he hit a three-pointer in game two, which was his first points of the NBA Finals. He's been shaky throughout the playoffs, you know, and I can take every other game. But when you're talking about every other two games or three games where you finally get to double digit scoring and put the pressure on the other team um, with your knockdown three point shooting ability, um, you know, but the game, but that just hasn't hasn't been the case with uh, with Duncan Robinson. Um, you know, he, he struggled through this series. They may have to switch things up and, and take him out of the starting lineup. Maybe coming off the bench, you know, that might actually help. But, you know, I mean, again, this thing is over. Even like you said, even if Bam comes back, I don't know if he's going to be 100%. And then even Bam at 100%. Anthony Davis 
is in a very unique situation because there may be three guys in the league that could do anything with Anthony Davis and then also have the ability on the offensive side of the court to actually put up the numbers to where he's going to have to work. And unfortunately, the Miami Heat don't have any of those guys that would be able to, to put that kind of, of, of pressure on, on, on Anthony Davis, you know, Jokic being, being closer to one of those guys is not the defensive player you know, um, to where he could actually contain Anthony Davis. Offensively, he can still put up 25 to 30 points a night, you know, if you need him to. But on a defensive end, he can't do it. And again, Miami doesn't have the guy. So Anthony Davis is getting anything that he wants. He's, 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 he's taking it. Um, I mean, at, at, at this point, I got Anthony Davis with the edge to get finals MVP. Um, you know, not, and it's, again, not to take away from anything that LeBron has done because LeBron's been phenomenal as well. We saw last night he actually led the team in scoring only by a point, you know, and he put up with 33-9-9. Uh, nine and nine. So, he, I mean, he's putting up finals MVP numbers as well. But Anthony Davis, th- what he's doing is just so effortless that it just it looks like completely lopsided anytime he has the basketball. Yeah, to me, AD is the, the finals MVP, and that's not a knock against Braun in any way. But AD is dominating the game without even having a ball in his hands most of the game. I mean, we saw yesterday the, the putback dunks, the rebounds. Those are situations where the play isn't even being run through him, and yet he's affecting the play. And on the other side, there were a couple of times where just his length alone on defense affected some of the things that Miami did. Um, to your point of like players being able to match up with AD, you're right. There, there aren't many guys, if any, in the league. I don't even think Jokic is in that conversation because Jokic is nowhere near the athlete that AD is. As, yeah. as gifted as he is offensively, he nowhere near comes close to what AD does defensively, and he's not the athlete to even threaten you in that way. Bam was, was going to be a big part of this series because Bam's athleticism was going to allow Miami to play AD one-on-one without having to worry about double teams. But on the flip side, where we're really seeing the impact of BAM is Miami has no one on their team who can get them a basket in the paint. Everything is predicated off just getting into the lane and kicking it out. And when all you're doing is kicking it out, you see the Lakers continue to rotate and the Lakers are not respecting any drive to the basket because they know nobody's going to finish in the lane. BAM gives you that aspect because BAM is a guy who around the rim will finish, will dunk it on you, could tip it back in. So not having him and then having to go with, with Leonard, go with, with uh, Kelly Olenek, those guys are solid players, but they are nowhere near uh, the athlete or the player that Bam is where he's going to force you to respect him inside the paint. So I, I think, you know, Miami's in, in a lot of trouble. Um, as you mentioned, I think Duncan Robinson is struggling because Duncan Robinson now has to play a role that he's not comfortable playing. His best role is when he's your fourth or fifth best scorer, you know, behind Butler, Dragic, hero, bam, because now he gets those wide open threes because you're paying attention to all these other guys. Tyler Hero could create some offense off the dribble. We know Jimmy could do it. We know Gorgon can do it. We know Bam does so many different things. Oh, by the way, Duncan Robinson now is getting an open elbow three or open corner three. Now you don't get that anymore because guess what? We're not respecting Kelly Olynyk as much. We're not respecting Kendrick Nunn as much. So you don't get those open shots and everything off the screen, you're seeing the Lakers running him hard off the screens, forcing him to take contest the shots the series is over bro it, it, there's no other way to put it the series is over it's just a matter of if is this going to be a clean sweep a gentleman sweep it's over there is no way and for anybody who was jimmy butler included as much as i love jimmy butler because he guaranteed a victory last night and i knew that was already trouble for even trying to guarantee that there is no way that the miami heat even fully healthy would be able to beat the Lakers four out of the next five games because that's what it's going to take to be able to win the series. You got to win four out of the next five to win the series. So you're telling me a hurt Miami team is going to do that? No way. Yeah, like they 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 really have no chance in in this series. And I'm sorry, I, I would have liked for it to be a little more competitive, but LA is just too big, too strong. And usually, you know, when you have the size, you give a little bit with the speed and the athleticism, but 
this is a, a, a unique team that has the size, the speed, the athleticism. They got the guys that can knock down the three point shot. They got your rebounders, you know, and, and again, you know, shout out to Anthony Davis, eight offensive rebounds in game two. There's no way that you're going to beat the Lakers if Anthony Davis is getting eight offensive rebounds. And we saw a, a couple of nights ago, you know, Dwight Howard, he's had those a big offensive rebound production. You know, he's playing really well. They did. The bigs are completely dominant. You know, we kind of spoke last week about if the Lakers guards would hit their shots and be in, and we would be able to keep, Dwight Howard in the game. And they've done that games one and two. Dwight Howard's been able to, to stay on the court and and he's he's looking good. I haven't seen Dwight Howard play ball like this in years, you know. And then if you're gonna if you're gonna get 16 and 10 off the bench from Rondo, you ain't got a chance, man. I'm, like he's there, putting up you know, starters right. numbers. He's putting up starters right. numbers there. off the bench. You're one thousand percent correct. As as I said in my prediction for the series, Miami's best shot was to be very efficient from three and force Dwight Howard off the floor because Miami does not have a, a lineup where they can play two bigs to match up with Dwight and AD. So they needed to be knocking down the threes, force Vogel to make a tough choice as to do I want to keep Dwight on the floor and him chasing somebody around, or am I going to go smaller and play AD at the five? Miami has not knocked down the threes at, at an efficient enough rate to force him to do that. So guess what? Dwight can stay out on the floor 25, 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And AD doesn't have to worry about playing the five. And then, like you said, oh, by the way, when we want to give Braun a couple minutes rest, we can bring Rondo in to facilitate everything. So it, it's just right now, everything's going right for the Lakers. Nothing that needed to go right for Miami is going right for them. They're not winning four out of the next five games, point blank, period. Shout out to them. They had a great season. They had a hell of a playoff run, but this is where it stopped. Yeah, and and maybe things might be different if we were talking about games one and two being played in L.A., and then now we're flying to Miami. Maybe you know at, at full strength, not not with Bam out and and, and and tragic out. Maybe, but even still, even with that, like it's just a mismatch. And I and I, I like I, I when I think about that, I think about. You know how when uh, when you play 2K, right, or, or if you play Madden, and you know you got the guys, you got the you got the guys who in their circle, they're they're the best. You know what I mean? They're untouchable. Nobody nobody can beat them. You know, and um, and then once they step out of their circle and they go into your circle, they get smoked. And that's what we're what we're seeing right here. It was all good just a week ago in the Eastern Conference. You know, you knocked off a really deep Celtics team. You knocked off the the back to back MVP and the current defensive player of the year. You got the you got the the the, the Pacers up out of here. But now we now we playing big boy basketball, and, and this is a whole different type of type of ball game that um that that you guys are in, and it, and it shows the difference in the, the the Eastern Conference and the in the Western Conference. Cause you know the Western Conference, there's there's a lot of two superstar teams that you got well, I mean, to deal with. I don't even think it was the conference. I I just think it's the experience. I mean, you know, Miami was able to get away playing zone against Milwaukee and Boston, and those mm -hmm. teams are, are still very young and inexperienced, right? So they can't figure it out. You can't play zone against LeBron because LeBron he he's gonna dissect that by the second possession. Like you might get away with it one possession. By the second possession, he's already going to figure it out. And then when you when you throw in a veteran like Rondo on the floor with him, now you have two guys dissecting your defense and figuring out, like, all right, AD, if you, if you sit up here along the baseline, I'm going to break down this first defender, and now that's just easy dunks and putbacks for you. You know, we saw, we saw it a couple times on the drives where Rondo would beat the first defender, and now you're sitting in zone. That back defender has to help. If not, it's an easy layup, and I'm just going to give it to AD for a dunk. Then the next time you don't help and LeBron just gets an easy floater in the lane. Like those are uncontested shots that Milwaukee and Boston couldn't figure out how to get where the Lakers, again, the, the veteran experience of, of those guys, particularly LeBron James, just said, look, you could you not going to be able to throw that same defense at me and think that it's going to slow me down or force me to shoot wild three pointers the way Milwaukee and Boston did. We still going to get whatever shot we want when we want. And you guys are going to have to adjust to us. 
So yes, a part of it, like you said, is the fact that they're facing two of the better players. And these are the two best players they've seen in a playoff series. But I think a big part of it is just the experience of the Laker team as a whole. LeBron's been here before. Rondo's been here before. Danny Green's been here before. Dwight has played in the finals before. Frank Vogel's coached in two Eastern Conference championship games uh, series before. So up and down the line, you got a bunch of guys who are not scared at the moment, and they're not going to be scared by a zone that you throw at them. And shout out to, to Frank Vogel as well, because he hasn't let the team get lackadaisical. And when I say that, you know, you see the way they completely dominated Miami in game, in game one. You know, sometimes when teams get, they start feeling themselves, you can start off slow and slow could turn into a close game and Miami might be able to steal at the end of that, at the end of the, the, the fourth quarter. This is quarter. Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real, Real Talk. Fans. Real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 